spectacular. Let's talk about the guys that have triggered this unbelievable 31-win season. And I want to talk about role players, and I want to talk about overachievers. That's a good word that you picked. Let's talk about uh, A.G. Orope. Let's talk about Nathan Mensa. People don't know the adversity that these guys have come through to get to this point to where they're going to be uh, next Saturday in the game against Florida Atlantic and then maybe on Monday against Connecticut. A.G. has had nothing but injuries ever since he came from Omaha. He's had three different surgeries, thought about giving up the game. Body could not handle the pounding, could not handle the practice regimen, etc. Brian Dutcher to, of the opinion, we want, want you to be part of the team, be an assistant coach. You feel okay, we'll let you practice. If you feel okay, we'll play you as a role guy, first guy off the bench. And what he's done in five and a half years is amazing. The other factor, he's a graduate student. He's going to get his master's degree in under a year on top of everything else that young man does wow. as it relates to basketball and therapy and rehab and going to class. He's going to get his master's spectacular. And the same storyline I really think has to go to Nathan Mensa. I mean, he is huge. He's a student of the game. He's unbelievably intelligent. He's from Ghana, left that country and came here with a quote, an adopted family became an Aztec, elected to stay, bypass the chance to go explore playing in Europe or try to go to the NBA draft, he's going to get his master's degree. He's in a two-year program. He's going to get his master's in June in one calendar year. Wow. Think about that. And he's the one that went through the scary episode with the blood clot issue mm -hmm. in the lung. He, he did not know if he could walk across the street at one point as a student body to go to a class much less go through the rigors of practice and playing in games and playing at altitude. Luckily, with sports medicine, they were able to treat it. They were able to control it. Two really unique student athletes. And I use that term student athletes because many times we can't use that term as it relates to these guys who are playing games in front yeah. of us during the college season. Uh, overachievers, yeah, probably. Uh, but or, I will say this about a rope. He changes the chemistry of the game. He comes oh, in and time. things happen. Mm -hmm. Bodies on the floor, <laughs> elbows, personal fouls, rebounds, tip shots, hook shots, jump shots. And the same thing with Mensa. And you look at what Nathan did at the start of the second half in the game against Creighton when they were losing. Block shot, field goal, critical rebound. Mm -hmm. Chemistry of the game changes. Late in the game. He made three big plays in the final 90 seconds. And by the way, when the Aztecs were starting to rally in the middle of the second half, who triggered it? A rope. Into the lane, into the paint, hook shot over the 7-1 center, hit two of them, and then had another one down on the low block against their other big guy. I mean, their contributions, not 40 minutes of basketball, but their spurts of 8 to 10 minutes changed the chemistry of the game. Uh, I think it's a it's a primary reason why the Aztecs are going to play this coming Saturday in the Final Four. Those two guys might be overachievers, but boy, are they contributors? Yeah, they're terrific. I mean, terrific young men. I mean, this is all part of the culture, right? You know, yes. the Dutcher is building. I mean, you know, this is the exact opposite of Kentucky with one and done. These are guys that you know, are, are not only graduating, they're getting a master's degree in one year, in one year through all the practice and all the travel and everything else that's going on. It's just remarkable. But every time I see, especially these two young men, you know, a rope and Mensa, just fabulous. And, and the whole story about, you know, AG coming to America and now he has his citizenship here in the United States. I mean, these guys I mean, I know AG's not going to continue playing basketball. Nathan Mensa will continue playing somewhere. Hopefully he can play at the highest possible level. I don't know if that's the NBA, but wherever, whatever happens, these two guys are going to be really quality human beings as they move into their, into their, uh, you know, twenties and thirties and beyond. You know, we love the history of Aztec basketball. And if you go back way back, you know, maybe the first great modern day Aztec player was Michael Cage, went on to a nice mm -hmm. career in the ABA and NBA as a six nine guy. Yeah. Played under Smokey Gaines, who was here and did a good job for a short period of time. 
And then we fast forwarded to where we got to the Steve Fisher regime and we had Jamal Franklin, a good player, now, did not make it in the NBA, but has gone about, has played in Europe for the last decade or so. And then obviously that, that transitioned us to Kawhi Leonard's superstar. Nobody, I don't think, could have ever expected Kawhi Leonard to be the complete basketball player he's turned out to be. He was a great defender. He had size. He had length at the defensive end. But he became a great shooter. When I first saw him in San Antonio standing out there drilling threes, I said, <laughs> where did this come from? Because we never saw that at Cox Arena Bayhouse. Uh, and then obviously – we fast forwarded now to Malachi Flynn, who's in his second year with the Toronto Raptors. But we have had now spectacular individual players, good kids, really do something with their career. So I'm looking forward to them. Let's go to the 